GR, one of the teams who also have that Draven in pocket to be able to pull out if they wanted to. Bro, I was just laughing before because YSKM, the triple ban, even the Aurelio in the first phase, this looks like the PCS to me, where YSKM would constantly get these hover bans, uh, or, or rather first priority bans, because of how strong he is. Now for FPX, speaking of strength, I mean, Lyric, that's a lot of burst damage built out with the first two picks here, with the Varus and the Elise actually. Nice and early blind for Hacker. Police blind coming through. So Hacker gonna go back to that strong early style, which is something we've known him for throughout his career, right? Uh, always known as a player who in the first 15 minutes can show up after that's where there've been mm -hmm. question marks. Against Weibo, we, we didn't exactly see that, but still we know that that potential is there with, with how much Hacker loves these early gank opportunities. And for IG, they're just gonna go straight towards that Lucian pick. A little bit surprised we haven't seen the same Pryo on Maokai that really has just been so standard throughout, yeah. it seems like every series in the LPL so far. IG just gonna outright skip over jungle in their first rotation and get YSKM on the Cassante. So with three top lane bans, wanting to make sure that that pool doesn't get narrowed down any further in the second rotation. But again, you said it you know, wasn't his standout pick. Like this is not what we know YSKM for. So it is something uh, to reiterate your words, standard. Definitely here for the top lane of IG. One of the side FPX, the dominant 2v2, it looks like they want to try and match a little bit, while further to your point, Jungle is now left isolated with no pickup yet for IG, and Gideon loves this Maokai. So the fact that they're sacrificing it here, Lyric, makes me question if they've got a better response. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, Maokai and Sejuani have been the two things that he has really leaned on quite heavily. Just being that enabler for the team, right? Giving them a lot of presence on the map and, and especially in team fights. You do still have other things that, that can work like that. Like, uh, I guess theoretically the Wukong, but Wukong typically wanting to be played into other like AD options with yeah. uh, that the, the armor you get from your passive. Things like the Vi are still up as well. And in this meta, when we are having so many marksmen down towards that bot lane, that's something that can always work to just zone one of them out with that ultimate and just get them right off the board. But FPX now gonna be the ones you would expect to go for their top lane. We've seen Shala, who has gone towards this Gwen into, into the Cassante pretty much every time Cassante's picked, but True. he's sitting zero and four on the scoreboard. So I would be happy to see him move into a different direction. The Jace being hovered right now, something that we know has been paired. Uh, you have a, like a ton of burst between both Jace and Elise. If they wanted to go for that option, you can try and snowball that Jace. Not as much about the typical setup that we'd see with things like Renekton since that's off the board, but still, a very strong AD soul laner that you'd be able to snowball with the right attention. And bro, look at this range already building up. I'll be asking you questions about how FPX played this out, but for the other side of IG, I want to progress because I'm curious about this other solo lane for Dove. You know, we had a lot of solids up, like the Azir he's played before, something like the Rise, but a Control Mage. Seems like it'll dabble its way in as well with how strong Bot is. And Lyric, I'm just curious about that jungler. You mentioned Vi, and I feel like you're dead on the money here if this gets picked up because it's... Uh, Probably the most viable option left. Yeah, you definitely want something that can bring it engage as well in my mind. Right now, hovering the poppy, but you hit on the range disparity that IG are going to face, especially the longer this game wow. goes on. So, no, they're still going to end up locking in this poppy. It's something that at least brings a lot of pow uh, power and presence in those first few levels. But, yeah, if we get later on, I mean, the Accelerate Shock Blast, arrows just flying at you. Uh, they're going to really rely on things like the Realm Warp or YSKM able to find those angles with Ghost to get the fights that they want started. While in the meanwhile, for FPX, it looks like they're going to be flipping around the lanes we thought. Gwen going to the top lane, Jake's moving to mid. So, Lyric, you know, you already cemented what I was saying about Poke. Walk me through a little bit about the lane state here and how FPX are setting themselves up with a lot of priority. 100%. In the bot lane, right, Varus Ash, we already know that's going to have, like, strong control over the wave. Going to have to be a little bit careful of the all-in potential once Lucianami get a few levels under their mm -hmm. belt, but should be fine if they're whittling them down appropriately. Top lane, Gwen has been doing just fine neutralizing this matchup in top side, but still, it just feels like Cassante provides more the longer the game goes on, which is why we haven't seen the Gwen really work here in the LPL despite its high presence. Coming from the PCS, and it all works together. This 4 and one team sitting up at the top of the leaderboard are now going to challenge the Phoenix. And this time around, they're looking favoured, which I don't think I've said for the last time in two years.
I am incredibly surprised that FPX's Giants are still so strong. True. Uh, you know, every team in, in, in the LPL gets gets some solid Giants. Well, I mean, you know, you just have so many fans in China that, the, mm -hmm. that there's always going to be some support for the team. But yeah, FPX fans still out there in spades. You you would expect LWX being the one carrying a lot of that fandom from being that stand uh, that you know the, the one world champion still True. left with the organization. But how well he's been playing recently. I mean, I remember casting their last series. Uh, LWX getting caught out a little bit. It's funny that I was talking, you know, more about Hacker who's come in. Now, we didn't start with Hacker there, Lyric, but he came in in the last series. has been quite solid. And it was a really nice debut considering that Hacker is just not someone that we've talked about much in the last two years either. Uh, he, he's had some really interesting opportunities. I think it was a little, it was either last year, 2021, where I shoot a spreadsheet counting the amount of times he flashed over a wall to get an early game. Oh, off. yeah. I love stuff like that. I, I love players who are willing to, you know, kind of take those big gambles looking for the play. And he's someone who's who is always willing to do that. And that's what we're going to want to see from him here again. We already highlighted potentially wanting to play a lot with care and find what you can on the dub. You're going to have push in the bot lane like you already see coming out from LWX and Lilla, even if they are taking uh, maybe a bit more damage than they would care for. But you're going to have a lot of Fryo to play with this hacker. So if there's one game where you have an opportunity to show what you can get done, it will be here in this game against IG. Now Gideon is on the bottom side of the map, worth mentioning here. We'll be spotted out by Lola who sends the hawk shot through, sees Gideon on red buff. So they'll have a pretty good idea of where he's going to go. Hack is now moving towards mid lane, trying to find an angle, but uh, guess who's also there? And Gideon also spotted out too, so it looks a little bit dangerous as Dove with the level lead wants to try for something. But against the Jace Elise, Lyric, you already said, this is how FBX want to play the game, and it would be on a silver platter. It's down in the bottom line. Meanwhile, Eel is burnt. La la, bit of a lull in the end, but that summoner now down a great trade from IG. Yeah, Lola taking just such an un unsubstantiated amount of, of, of tr like damage in this first few levels. They're you know, like, I want to play it right. Being able to get those W's off, get the damage down, and sort of trade out with that range. But good job by On and Wink. We've talked about how they've been a really solid 2v2, despite the fact that they were the most questionable piece uh, coming yeah. out from IG last year. And, and, you know, we kind of wondered, hey, why are IG sticking with them? But I really feel like they've shown us why coming into 2023. And despite the fact that FTX were the ones who started off with that first, like, few minutes of Pryo, IG actually the ones able to turn that around now. And it looks like Gideon should even be able to get both Scuttle Crabs. He did that lane off of Bully. Hacker saw him. The mid push came through from Gideon alongside Dove. And as you nailed down, that double Scuttle plus Deep Vision in the enemy jungle. Gideon has been great like this. He's been a really solid piece. And I think each week he's been getting more and more confident on this IG roster when he didn't really have expectations. As you said, IG in the early game so far, so good. As Lola goes into brush, Arn just sees him there, sticks around, and gets quite a lot of gold here with a thank to first strike. But it doesn't mean that Arn can't reset with no mana and half a HP bar. So Lola gonna, gonna take a bit of damage, but I still think this is overall good for the side of FPX, making <laughs> sure that that recall doesn't go off. Hacker going to be spotted, so if he did want to make any plays or, or path down towards that bottom lane to try to abuse that, he's going to be able to now. So, Lyric, question for you before something happens down here is what IG are kind of playing towards? Because you already told me FPX are going to play mid-jungle. They play defensive towards bot. Is that just the answer? Yeah, I think the counter gank's coming out from Gideon or just the hovering and matching where Hacker's been has been quite good. His Cocoon misses. Yeah. So, not going to be able to find that dive that they were really hoping to look for. We know at least such an incredible, you know, dive champion would have been able mm -hmm. to pull it off quite easily. At least get some summoner spells out. But uh, going back to IG's game plan, I think what they've been looking at early on has been quite good. Gideon knows that, sure, when you have a lease, if, if you can get on one target quickly, you can burst them out. But if you can match that gank and kind of prevent that from happening, Poppy just provides a lot in a lot of these early duels and skirmishes, so 
Gideon doing a nice job to slow down the tempo. The thing I question is once we get into the mid game, can they use this realm warp, close the distance, start getting on and wink ahead enough to where they can really take over? Because there's such a short range pump, they want to brawl, they want to get in your face, and later yeah. on that can be very annoying, especially with the amount Whoa. of PC that they have. Well, <laughs> but meanwhile, uh, YSKM on the matchup I thought wasn't going to be too exciting, just says all out, time to go. Shallow who with a ghost down from that as well, but YSKM did match that as All Out is going to be going pretty much zero out in the time being. And that ulti now down with Shallow who just hitting six. The, uh, the potential dance was there, but sadly Ooh. for YS Cam, it's not Fiora, it's not Jax, it's not Irelia. So I don't think we're going to get to see that same level of volatility that just has been so fun to watch. Okay. But hey, FBX get a dragon! Let's go! Hey, okay, well, good start, considering Look, what we talked about with bottom line. I don't want to show bias, and it's YS Games' birthday, so you don't think we're going to be biased. <laughs> maybe, maybe some, you, support, you support a lad on his birthday, right? But you do. FBX is so dire in the standings right now. Just uh, seeing them get the small wins is always nice. There's only, you know, one LPL 2023 spring split. You get a birthday every There's, year. True. There's only one first dragon in the game. So, True, you know. and they got that too. So who's, who's really winning today? It's a small gold lead as well for FPX, and that's coming off the back of the bottom lane as we saw before, as guess who's caught out? Gideon has to send up the shield. Of course, Hacker can't leap in, so he's able to run away. But as the saying lyric, bottom side, big lead right, big lead right now for FPX. Eldervix and Lola got 10 CS ahead, so things are going pretty well for now. Seems like they've been able to get a lot of that off of uh, stopping the recall coming out from on with the bubble. Woo! So huge. Once again, Lilla just having to burn that heal off of cooldown. I was going to say that Epix might have, you know, the, the CS lead in the spot lane matchup, but they haven't really been able to do anything with it. They, I don't believe they've really been able to chunk down turret at all. We've seen Vision Control has been squarely in IG's favor, and Hacker... He's been leaning a lot around the spot lane. It's been all about mid bot. I mean, Gwen at least, not too many opportunities up in that lane, especially up against the Cassante, so I get it, but really not able to turn how much Hacker has really spent leaning around these lanes into anything so far. And now, Dove, we'll have a Realm Mob as well. You talked a little bit about the pivot that could happen and, you know, playing patiently, building time for IG. Dove having that Realm Warp. Uh, after that next back to come through as well, it's going to be pretty pivotal to how we see bot lane play out continuously. He's LWX is positioning for the ulti flash, but he doesn't throw it out. Arn still with a relentless pursuit, and they hold off on the trigger for now, especially with Lola getting close to six lyric. There is going to be a lot of lockdown in this 2v2 that I think is quite relevant. That's another thing I like about what FPX has is, I mean, Enchanted Crystal Arrow, Chains of Corruption, Cocoon, just a lot of ways that IG are trying to run you down and can try and build that space between you. Uh, and then, you know, the, the cross map and the global plays that are going to come from it. But Gideon now, going to look for the game. Uh, um, but he did relentless pursuit in. However, guess what? The laser beam's flying through. The flash is there, but Gideon says, G'day. First blood goes down, and that's a bit of a how you're going with the white flag raised out by Arn. A cheeky little bugger as Hacker comes through, but blocked by Gideon. What a pro as the tidal wave is there. Hacker runs out the bubble again. LWX just resenting oh. this bottom lane. Now with the jungle intervene, a three versus one. Hacker gets onto one, but the flash for the buckler. Gideon. And guess what? He's surviving what? thanks to Wink. Invictus Gaming A chads again. I mean, great energy coming out from IG. Lola just consistently getting caught and punished from IG's bot lane from Gideon. And the fact that IG were able to, sure, they give one over, but they kill all three in the end. We're going to see here Gideon coming after finishing off those Krugs. FTX is the ones looking for the engage. Chains of Corruption went on to on, but Lola left in such a deep position, gets taken down immediately. And now FPX, they're hoping to turn this knowing some tools are down, like the ultimate from the side of on, but uh, Wink able to hit six, gets the title wave, and LWX forced the flash for on, able to follow up. Hacker does his best to turn it around. He's left in a position where I think it would have been pretty hard to run away in the end, but like you said, the buckler. <laughs> he flashed the buckler, and it kept him alive. 
If Acker could have gotten one more, it wouldn't have been too bad, but one for three trade. Kills even spread across pretty nicely. Yeah. IG are going to be loving that. And look, I mean, loving the play myself, but honestly, just loving the aggression that's come through. As I said in recent weeks, Gideon has really settled in. A great gank from the Poppy, but more importantly from Wink hitting literally every ability. Now that bottom lane set up at Lyric, we're talking about the CS advantage. I guess it has come back around again. To mention that, yeah, they haven't done much with it, but now IG actually have a bit of a, an equal, a, an equilibrium, I guess is the English I'm looking for. We're going to see what they're able to do with it. It's Jack Show, just finished by YSTM. Realm Warp. Okay, Arrow does hit Dub, and that says a big no, but Arrow's still on a longer cooldown this earlier on. 15 seconds till Dragon. Oh, and already having to burn the TP right back to mid lane after trying to look at the play. And we kind of saw both sides of what we were speculating about there, right? Trying to use the Realm Warp to close the distance, but having DCC tools to be able to shut them out. Uh, it won't really mean too much if FPX aren't able to start using these, you know, the range they have to, to, to generate a lead. They were able to at least find a plate on Fot. We can see a plate almost taken down in the mid lane, but we are going to have to see a little bit more. Looks like they should be able to get this dragon, though, because On is coming right from base, but Mythic, once again, already being picked up by another member of IG. And look, Wisecam, no TP there, so can't join in the dragon play means FPX get double. Opening up in less than 12 minutes into this game. You talk about Mythic there as well. Just note the Chala who has been able to climb towards his. Uh, we're getting LWX backing now too. So I'm expecting that Eclipse should be done too for his first item. So we are getting a lot of those Mythics available there. And uh, I'm trying to look. Herald went down to who? Went up to Chala who actually. So that's triple objective now in this game. Picked up by FBX. Doing a nice job, Shala, who, like you said, has consistently gone for this matchup. Hasn't turned into game wins, but he knows how to fare in this lane quite well. Going to get punished by Gideon now. There's a ghost. Let's do the flipendo right into the wall as well. Knocked up a second time, and fake Aurelia runs him down. It's a shutdown, actually, just from CS that goes right to YSKM. And Shala, who sadly doesn't have TP to even manage to get back to lane, so Shala, who... Uh, gonna give over a nice bit of gold to YSKN. It changes corruption. And here's another one. Guess what, though? Arn doesn't stay still for very long. That's a shame. Arrow was close range, and now double ulti down with Hacker moving down as well. We can also see on the minimap, Care starting to make his way over, at least leaning down. It looks like they aren't gonna commit in the end because, I mean, IG's bot lane would be able to get away if they so choose, but... Man, Wing's skill shots have really been on point this game. Uh, feels like he's consistently been out trading, especially Lula on the opposing side, but I mean the bubbles just consistently connect. God, it's just been, you know, Masterclass from Wink on not an AD carry. <laughs> it's just weird. I think at this point not seeing him on an AD or at least expecting it, but you know, Wink has been a massive improvement this split. We said the same about Arn. We said the same about, you know, this bottom lane as a 2v2 overall. So, I'm pretty excited to watch this mid-game play out because, Lyric, we are getting towards that third dragon, three minutes time. IG are already grouping up, even though nothing's available on the map right now. Looks like they're going to be switching around to clear out Vision in River, and then maybe make something happen, but they're just a gang squad at this point. They know their win condition quite well, having to work their way around the map as a unit. I even like that they've been putting focus towards this enemy side of the jungle. Is it Jennifer Slayer? Oh! <laughs> Okay, nice Wink, response. Right. I mean, yeah. that was that was an incredibly close arrow with, with no vision of, uh, you know, Lula being right there looking for that play. So Wink holding it up. But this does open up a potential point of pressure for FTX. And LDX, his Chains of Corruption did just come up. Oh, nice dodge for the Cocoon, though. Meanwhile, as we shift to the left side of our screen. Remember, Chains of Corruption, you said, were just coming up, so... Flash burn from Gideon. That's double from IG, but they still want to go in. Gale Force and everything used on the hacker. There's a the culling as well. Realm will follow through. They just burn flashes. Gideon says nope over to the mid lane. And Care is suspended for a million years. IG wanted to fight after getting caught out. What is this team? Turning right on the member that was exposed and left by himself. Gonna lead to Scuttlecrab coming out. Dove's gonna get away pushed in mid. And it's been these small picks and these small opportunities 
which is what IG picked things like the Rise 4 that are really coming to fruition for the team. Gonna go straight into the replay. I mean, things are looking pretty solid, right? IG are the ones being collapsed and pincered on, but after getting the flash, they opt to back out, unable to uh, cover so much distance with the dash into the Gale Force. And then with Lola over the wall, Var is still One, incredibly far away. Two, it just gives the three, opportunity four. for the pick, and yeah. He's just <laughs> CC'd forever. Dude, it's a bow tap. Care was not able to get out, you know, you all remember you're a six-year-old kid. I don't know how, how old you were when you first went into Bouncy Castle. But you're in there, and it's a bit overwhelming. All the other kids have been in there before, and they're bigger than you. And you're just flying everywhere, Lyric. You ever have this trauma? You know where I'm coming from? And you're stuck, and you can't get out. You know, I don't have that trauma. But I do have the tra a similar trauma, of which was oh, going yeah. on a trampoline for the first time as a kid. Oh. And somehow jumping, like, way too hard that, like... I actually flew over the fence into my neighbor's yard and just landed on a bunch of giant rocks. I must have been like oh five years old. And after that, I just was like, yeah, trampolines, I'm done with these. I'm done. <laughs> it's a bit dangerous. Dude, the fact you're still alive after that, uh, that's good. Yeah. You know, or maybe it made you tougher landing into I'm a field I'm a lot of like rocks. care, you know. Y you might be down, but you're a survivor. True. Well, as on goes towards mid, um, they, they're looking for yet another pick with Wink being at the center of this. Again, Gideon with a good dodge of the cocoon. There's the arrow. Can't block all, but it's now Shallow who's in as well. Needlework will fly through against the wall. He'll die with it though as oh. now Wisecam separates Shallow who, a great ultimate. But Shallow who's still with the dash. He's the last one Needlework. He's used on the dragon. Now in a five versus four. No smite available in FBX. A beautiful play timing with no smite to contest that third dragon. No smites, and even like a lot of impactful ultimates down, right? Wisecan just used his on, just pulled out the calling. So, not even gonna try and opt for any sort of like fight or, you know, potential like. We see a lot in LPL where you're like, hey, we know we can't take the dragon. We're a man down. We're gonna posture. We're gonna hope we'll find a pick off of this. Not able to do that either. Dub, we'll just TP topside, get this wave pushed in, and generate a little bit of pressure for the side of IG. Care is going to answer, so Dove isn't going to commit. Looks like IG were wanting to get resets off to try to look for a play on Herald, but we're going to see here Gideon getting caught out. A lot of uh, skill shots end up missing, but you just had so many, so many different yeah. ways to lock an opponent down. It gives over the kill to the side of FPS, but like you pointed out, Shalahu having a dash is able to escape after YS Cam does go with that ulti, and now Hysterix we get Fight number two, maybe. Well, it feels like uh, we've had a little bit more than that, but right now IG looking for something on this map because objective-wise, Invictus Gaming have picked up Zilch. No turret, no dragon, no herald. This will be number one, and even FPX are looking to contest the back end of it as it's going down slowly. Smite will come through, and the gold value very important here for this team. But Lyric. I'd still be happy as an FPX fan because you're looking at Soul, a Hextech Soul in three minutes 40 is uh needle, needle, needle. Well, no. Okay, not gonna kill. But how how much would you be smiling from ear to ear at this point, considering you're on Soul Point? Uh, it's huge, right? Because it just gives you a lot of wiggle room in terms of if at any point IG start up a Drake and it comes down to like a 50-50, I mean, your right could be a flip of a coin, you winning two, you have a lot more options. You're fine giving up Drake's at this point for things like pressure on Herald to expand, to, I guess not expand, but find a gold lead because IG still are up in like yep. top side, get wards down. So it just definitely alleviates a lot of pressure from your side and gives you more room to play the map. And again, when, F, when they have more room, the team that has so much range. I'm excited to see the first damage come out. Speaking of room, this is double TP. Arrow not going to hit, but look, here where Care is. Arrow will go down as Wink absorbs. Culling's out as well. There's a couple of abilities now down on cooldown as Barry. Heal was used in the mid lane. It looks like IG picked their battle, and they may have picked the right one. Going to be able to guarantee that they get turned in mid lane. I also want to highlight for the side of FPX, right? We were highlighting the range, but like LWX did go down hit build, so it's not going to be all about these arrows just flying oh, at you and, and taking you down. A lot of the damage is going to be coming out from Care, who's, I mean, as Chase, you still want like a few more items under your belt before, I mean, those accelerated shot glass start hitting for, you know, half health bars, but they will still have range to play with, but maybe won't be as 
like the domineering as if we had that that lethality jace uh the lethality virus coming through true it was something when we looked at the comps you know we we talked a lot about the range i like that you managed to suss out that it's an on hit build uh, because on the other side, you know, we do have Gwinsu's, but we're going up against a Rapid Fire Cannon. We know that Arn is incredibly strong, especially with the Imperial Mandate. Nami, also want to point out that we've got <laughs> we've got a Shroud there on Gideon. So we ain't going for anything as a pure tank. We are going more supportive method here for Gideon to amp up his other members. I also like it as well, just, you know, providing that, that support, because a lot of times... You'll see, you mostly see Poppy just outright not go for Mythic in a lot of games now. You'll go towards things like the, uh, the, the Zone Plate and, yep. um, Dead Man. Oh, what's, there we go. I was going to say, uh, Force of Nature. That's true. That's the name of the, uh, the Magic this one, but. So, going for this early, gonna try and set up for his teammates to be able to, I think, have even just more burst and pick potential. We, we've already seen if On can, can get those dashes off now with the rapid fire cannon he covers such an incredible amount of range himself and he can just outright delete someone once uh he gets buffed up by nami with the mandate support there so let's let's gear up for the the 45 second fight right we're talking a lot about items very relevant here i want to bring out that shadow flame just being fixed or right, fixed or finished by uh Jala, who on this gwen force of nature here for yskm what are you favoring? What's the setup look like here for FPX and how do they manage to lock down this salt? I actually like what IG have done so far because IG have control. Okay. For FPX, I would have liked to see them posture in mid a little bit sooner to try to give them an avenue into the river. Because you look at bot, bot waves not pushed out. That got shoved in by Dove. Mid lane, they didn't even go for a contest. So it's going to be really hard for FPX to try and find a way in. You're kind of hoping for one member to overstep like on could potentially be doing right now in mid lane. You throw out your CC, you try and pick him off, and then you use that numbers advantage to force your way in. But he's got everything, Lyric. I mean, still the flash available. They are able to poke him down, which is good, but IG, as you said, the setup, absolutely brilliant. Onto the objective first, they just need to take down the smite. Does so as FTX coming in lane. Shock blast combination is there, but FTX will go no further. Invictus Gaming instead. We're gonna clear out the vision on their way back to mid lane and stop that dragon stacking that FPX were holding so strongly is. That's a safer on warp just in case. And FPX didn't even use that time to, to turn it into anything, right? They didn't get any vision on the top side, didn't push out their top wave, didn't answer back in bot. It feels like it was just wasted time from FPX. They're still hoping to find a pick, <laughs> but uh, it's not gonna be given over. I'm just gonna sit out the culling. There's a flash there, Gideon is forcing out summoners as Lola has to back off. Poke again, not going to be big because it's not a lethality virus. And Shock Blast is the damage Lyric talked about. It's doing something, but against the Nami, it's not going to be enough. As IG have forced them back, taken summoners, and FTX yet again looking for their opportunity. It is stymied, it is stifled, it is nothing. At least at the time. Being. At least we are seeing that care is, is getting more relevant, right? Uh, yeah. Before, walking the Dragon did about like 40 45 percent of on's health bar with an accelerated shock blast once he gets Serelda's grudge that's going to be a huge tipping point as well and when that's when we're really going to see those hitting for maximum amounts of damage but I, I feel like so far after seeing what ftx the lack of what they did around dragon or like around the map in that time that ig had full control Kind of makes me lose even a bit more confidence the good thing for them is they just have so many pick tools again it just takes one misstep from ig to to lead into something but ig haven't had too many missteps so far still up 3k gold so does it does it get more relevant or less relevant as time goes on because i want to know how fpx play the game as we start looking at elders you know maybe second baron if it gets to that stage when IG are a little bit more tankier and have more items. Maybe a question for later as Arn goes too far forward. Tidal Wave is used. That was a close call. Arn had to cleanse and almost dies from going aggressive in the choke. Once again, just constantly for like FPX almost find the damage there to Arn and still have picks are also the ones who are forced away. They aren't able to follow up on that. But looking forward, like you're asking, I feel like the hard thing is FPX's comp really wants to I'd say even at least be, be even in goal, but definitely be ahead, be able to contest those waves, like we said. They're at a point now where I think they could have gone for that mid-contest had they, they looked into it earlier, but they need to use that 
before IG are able to, to convert things like Realm Warp or just the advantage on has into any more kills, or the fact that they have range and can look for these contests isn't even going to be relevant. And as well, the Realm Warp you brought up, you brought up in draft, still relevant again, how they play sides. You know, Dove is now a two item rise, fully stacked up on Rod of Ages and Seraphs and Braze. Uh, level yeah. 16 on that rise as well, to worth mention. So we are getting to a point where IG are getting more comfortable in their boots as two minutes till that next dragon. Baron is sitting up there as well. And even though Shallow Ho's moved down to bottom side, look at IG, they're like, well, don't worry about it. We're going to threaten the Baron and go the other way. Seems like Shallow Ho is hoping someone would make their way bot to answer that way. But yeah, IG, they don't care about it at all. They're going to play around where they have vision and try to force FPX in. Kind of like right now, both teams are trying to force the other one to make a misstep and come into them. Neither team has really given it over so far. IG have had some good sidesteps of the CC that FPX has put out. And FPX, I mean, with the amount of times that they have engaged and ended up picked off, it seems like they're being a lot more cautious. You know, now 26 minutes into the game. Yeah, again, it's a sign of good play, at least from IG side, is getting crosses again. We are doing the dance with our emotional pants. And IGs, they get the scuttle crab. They've cleared out all the vision from Baron. Shallow who once again, gonna be looking for this oh. solo kill. Is onto Dove. Realm Walk will still be taking this. There's no CC, but Care is dead. The FBX 4-4 are losing out. It's why it's KM. It's knock up City again. That bounce house looking so dangerous. I hate getting stunned in a bouncy castle or trampoline. Either way, it is hell. And I just want to highlight on because On's the one really putting out the damage in these fights, having the consistent avoid quick plays, able to just get off these abilities consistently and dash in. FPX going to look for the contest here. Shallow who goes in. This is dangerous. But look at the low health bars on IG. They're getting poked down. Gideon could be up next. Bruna <laughs> down. Wink with the bubble. It's a lure. And I ain't talking about a Pokemon version as now IG have to pull off the Baron, but they got to pick off the back end of it. The fact that they survived and it's still alive. His testament to how this game is going, his arrow flies through, Lola trying to do it himself, but Wait, everyone lives. This might open up Drake. True, that's a good point. FPX have an opening, as you said, Lyric. It has to be a quick reset. It is a Hextech Rift, but can Gideon get there in time? 7K going to 6, he'll be there by himself, but again, only by himself as he needs teammates over the wall. Spotted out, Hex Flash already burnt, doesn't have the real one. And Hextech Dragon in the window from FPX goes over. Gideon didn't even have Smite, even if he had managed to get into the pit, which is a little bit tragic, but yeah, IG forcing the, the play, finding those picks, setting up for overall FX win with that Drake. We're gonna see a great stun coming out from Gideon and then on. Able to throw up so much damage. YSKM following up with that ulti, but again, look at just how quickly his cooldowns come back up, saves the Gale Force, gets in there, and finds that pick off the back end. IG still do have a pretty solid goal lead, is done. Yeah, remember there's a Hextech goal here, so get ready to run. The Shallow Who, remember his TP is available, but he's been burnt down a little bit. His Dove is not in the fight either. 4 vs 4 around the Baron, and the Hextech goal is going to add a little bit of hope. And the follow-up that FTX can utilize as well. This is going to be a 50-50, it's dangerous, but guess what? Hackers evaded the call. Is now into the pit at 3.5k, he might get in, but Gideon is low again. IG the second time around with this Baron that they've tried to hit it, and FBX have just said no. Honestly, also kind of like Rift Advantage for FBX. It feels so yeah. good to be like Javaris, Jace, Ash, on the red side, able to poke out from the safety of over that wall against a team that's contesting Baron. So FBX utilizing that, IG once again not able to get that Drake up. And now with Hextol, it feels like that really Whoa. Oh wait, uh -huh. I was gonna say changes the dynamic, but that Lucian damage, Still something you got to put respect on. Yeah, I mean, Arn has been doing that all game long, but the fact that he eat in almost killed Lola uh, would look awesome if it was a successful kill, but at the very least, it threatens FTX off that T1 turret, that Lyric, they haven't been able to get. In fact, if we look at the turrets they have been, it's only one tier one in the bottom side of the map. No, so... That's actually not, not the worst because it means there's a lot of standing gold that makes the gold lead that IG have a little bit deceptive, right? Because top yeah. turret, very close to going down. Mid lane, like if they went to five, there's just a lot of like structures that will be easy for them to take. 
to equalize this. And we've seen them getting more comfortable with trying to kite out the, the potential engage and pick of IG. That's about IG trying to use the fact that they've had vision control again. this whole time. But once again, can they get the TP. The, the arrow's coming through, flipped away, but it was only care. The jungle's still there as Hacker's knocked up into the pit. Oh, he gets it! Hacker man to the rescue! Shallow, who's also taking a kill out on Wink as Hacker goes golden to survive this long. He's still a death threat to his skill as Care has rejoined now, jumps on in. A double kill for Arn. Look at this, Lucian. Look at Arn. Man, already with a triple kill. Flipping back to the quadrant. No, he's got to run for his life. Shallow, who's still the biggest threat. But Arn is the man who brings it back around after the steal of a century from good old Hacker. It's Shala who on one side, on on the other, both trying to dominate these team fights for their teams. Eight one three on the Lucian. I don't. I still don't think you should look for the fight against Shala. <laughs> Shala who is is just terrifying right now. His scoreline might not reflect it, but you saw no one wants to fight in this team fight. Care gets knocked out right away. We're gonna see here how this all goes down. Smites come out, but Packer is just a little bit better. Does end up going down. Did commit everything to get into the pick, but at least Shaolin finds one to start the talk. I want to see how LWX goes down. He honestly just runs forward. Uh, a little bit overzealous because, I mean, Elise is very clearly going to go down once the steal comes out. He just runs and takes the full force of the call in. And then on, able to just dash around the fight, uses the flash to avoid just the tip oh, no. of that snip coming through. And, uh,. Where to pass? <laughs> the crowd laughed. The good they're days. loving it. Absolutely loving it because they're like, oh, well, after that fight, LWS just rage quits. Now, of course, there is a, 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 obviously some kind of connectivity issue on FPX's side. We'll let you know when that's been resolved or you'll see the game pop up again. Any updates will be given as well. But what a game one. You know, we are so back and forth where FPX through a couple of great plays, Denial and the Baron and the, and the pickup of the team fight, we're able to get the Hex Hex goal. And then we come back to the Baron, and Gideon's ulti only hits Care, not Hacker, who has once again been playing some hell of a League of Legends as we're finally back into the game. And this team of FPX Lyric still got a good chance in this game, as they're not too far down on goal. That soul I talked about was there before. And they do have Baron, I believe, on one of the members. Like I said, when it comes to fights, we're looking at Shalahu, we're looking at On, and seeing which one can outperform. I feel like for FTX, it's still not really about the 5v5, it's about how much you can whittle them down beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems that like they got a little bit overzealous off the Baron steal and then wanted to try to find that fight, which I get, right? There were some low health bars, Shalahu found an early pick, but uh, On. He's going to feel really good playing as aggressive TP. as he can. He's be playing. FPX could be in trouble. Gideon goes in. No, he's dead before the fight starts. Wyatt going to come in late, but Lola is already down. The ulti burned out. It's all out onto LWX. He's going to get flipped back as well with the dying breath. Oh. on. cleans it up. Running away. He cleanses through. Dodges away from Care. His last auto. Oh, my God. It was Jason Bourne. The amount of DPS coming out from the members of IG is huge. Burst there from on dog gets in the back line. I don't believe they should be able to turn this into any sort of game ending push, but they're gonna get mid lane turret off of it. We have Elder coming up in less than a minute as well. They're gonna be able to clear out some of this vision, get their own vision down, which is what it looks like Wink was angling for. And huge, huge fight for IG. Flanks coming in, getting a little bit overzealous. He gets bursted out so early on. But calling, just calling and nothing else deletes Lola from the fight. Why is Cam able to get a lot done on the front end? But look at Doug this whole time. Just kind of running back and forth, getting the cues off. Everyone is so enticed and charmed by how big the Lucian is. They go to take him down. <laughs> and Doug just being like the silent assassin on the back uh, half of that fight. Able to get out so much DPS. I mean, right now, I. IG, if they can close the gap and, and get the fight, Dub and Honor is putting out way too much damage. And, and if they close that gap, Lyric, they get Elden, and, and Wink will get credit. Ladies and gentlemen, 15 out of 17 kill participation. He has been off his chops this game, and I just He's had a huge. barbecue for dinner. Honestly, the comparison is wild as IG now setting up to clear the vision, but FPX are looking for that pick. They've got a ward right over the wing as they go through with the Enchanted Crusader, but it's on the wise hand. Shalahu following this one up, but IG are nowhere nearby. So it is just an attempt at a pick with an arrow that only has a 30 second cooldown. 
IG playing incredibly patient so far. Realm Warp is up, and all of on scap closers are up as well. Other than Splash, which will be up in 30 seconds, but FTX might not give them that time as they're trying to just get this started right now. The biggest question is that poke you mentioned, whittling IG down. Lurk already told you that's their goal. Wink is going to put a bit of a thorn in that though, as meanwhile Duff just goes towards mid as they're trying to hit down Elder. FBX are just going to be thwarted by Duff hitting mid, now ready for the Realm Wolf, is going to join on in. Balan in the pit, excuse me, it's Gideon rather as the arrows head the tidal wave too. Lola flashes away, the culling is just such a threat. This Lucian is big in charge. As FTX continue to try to poke out this dragon, Lyric continues to be a bit of a jump start. The Shallow who is going to be spotted out on the flank. It's at 6k. The poke lands again. FTX are now looking for a flank, but Shallow who insists against it. And Dragon just says, Who wants me? Who wants a piece of me? No one does at the moment as Arn gets poked out and we just keep dancing. Okay, wait. Oh, wait. Arn! Oh, Arn! Arn! No! Arn! He flashes back in, back onto the dragon. He's still alive now for the turn away. He dodges the arrow, and the smite goes through. Arn with the biggest brain I've seen. Bigger than Megamind, and I love that movie. As IG have taken down the top lane in the meanwhile as well. Five members stay standing. How did Arn live? That was almost the biggest int I have seen. That could have completely turned the, turned the tables and given FTX the dragon and the fight but it ends up working out for IG. They now have Elder, they still have that gold lead. We've seen them winning every fight. And wow, just so big that Ahn's able to make it through. And honestly, one of the pivotal things was that IG and FPX were posturing long enough for Ahn yeah. and Dove to get their flashes back up. Both of them didn't have flash before that standoff. They weren't on a very high cooldown. They get them back up. Most of FPX did have flashes down, so. That ended up being the difference maker for Ahn being able to get over that wall. Now IG is going to turn straight <laughs> towards the Baron. And there's no top laner available. Shallow who has TP, but no one nearby in the nick of time. And especially with Dove whittling this down. Baron's going to go down. They've got the Elder too. That fighting tool that we all know and love that ends League of Legends game. Soul be damned on FPX with his poke comp. IG right now in the 5v5 lyric. Things are looking good now with the 6k gold leader. 37 minutes as they look to channel this Baron into some of those base turrets to finally break it down. I think they're going to be able to quite easily as well. There's so much threat there from on and how aggressively he's been playing. We've seen Care still having some good damage that he's able to put off, but with Nam Sustain coming in right behind on, he's not really too bothered to take some of this up. Gideon Zolti will only send them back a small distance, but still it's feigned out as YS Cam takes the fruit of the poke. Arn steps up, that range massive as Elder still there for 35 seconds. Top left, guys, it's not the spawn. It is actually the buff here. As into the turret, one Nexus turret's going to be remaining shortly. The poke will be enough as Gideon with the ulti yet again thrown out, faked out as IG takes so much damage. Shallow who a huge threat is up. Flashes on in, wants this to end right here into the air hacker, goes but now there's no next turret. Culling to get the burst out, LDX is blasted with the bigger AD difference, look at him go! I told you Jesus Christ, it is Jason Bourne! Huge performance from IG, and as we get more games under their belt, I feel like more we get more answers on, on, on how this team will do as the season goes on. We were saying, hey, you know, maybe TT showed the formula of banning out top lane, not being able to snowball through YSKM, but this bot lane time and time again, showing how reliable that they are to be able to play through, getting sure. as well, and what he was able to do early on in the game was uh, was pretty substantial for the side of IG. Yeah. Uh, great. Sorry, you, your picture caught me off guard. I'm the only one who gets a camera, apparently. That's your you know, thinking face camera, about FPX. My camera just randomly decides to crash, and yep. I can't reset it without, you know, just getting off the broadcast completely. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just going to hang out like this. Rough times ahead, but look, that's what I'll say about FPX. You know, we got into those 5v5s. Hexol was there. Uh, it, was a, it was a barn burner, but, you know, really struggling to see, uh, I guess, pathways in, Lyric. You know, every time some of this CC was launched... IG always had that kind of counterpunch. And the fact that they won some of those 5v5s, I think, came down to individual skill. I don't know if there's uh, 
much more to it than that. But there was a lot of individual skill flared. Oh, uh, agreed. And uh, I mean, on and wink, I think tremendous performance. Yeah. Especially punishing the FPX bot lane, which, you know, people who were watching last year and remember like how good the FPX bot lane could be. Like, I mean, it's a different beast, right? And how bad Losing the IG Kong. bottom lane could be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah kind, of the, kind of the role reversal, but also IG losing out on Hung and getting Lola, who just doesn't have that same breath of experience, is nowhere near yeah, as aggressive. Yeah. And we saw a lot of mistakes were punished. Uh, Lola was mistakes punished by On and Link, as well as. Yeah, I mean, huge moment. Huge when we can look at this IG team. And right, we had some of those performances earlier on. I'm thinking back to like some of their games against RNG and EDG where On and Wink did show up and did have massive performances. But as we, we go on and we see them time and time again able to carry games, it only gives you more confidence in, in this IG team being able to yep. hold this momentum and not be a team that just fizzles out as the split goes on. So great by them, Dove. Might not have been the most Holy. pivotal in terms of some of the realm warps and stuff we saw in this game, but later on when On did go down, he was the one able to dish out the damage at least in meaningful moments. And when we look at FPX, I mean, all of your hope was was pretty much on Shalahu for a majority of that game to like zone people out of those fights. And sure, Care might have the highest damage, but a lot of that being put out, you know, from afar, from one screen away, so it kind of makes sense yeah. that he's going to be that one. But it really felt like Shala, who was the one who was trying his hardest to make something happen for, for Fun Plus Phoenix. True. Had, had a really solid lane, and we, we saw some of those team fights as well, was able to just annihilate. Uh, Lyrica's having a giggle because 46% of the team's damage was done by Arn on this Lucian. We know who MVP is, guys. Even though it's, you know, that duo lane, either one of them could deserve it. We're going to go to a break.